Hello my friends, John LaRue here with another Unbiased Unboxing, and in this episode we're going to take a look at Bloodstones, the Kickstarter that finally, finally arrived. Alright, let's see what's going on. Okay folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Yes, thank you so much, I really appreciate that support. So, you get a little bit of what it looks like from the back. Um, and I guess that's fine, you kind of see the different maps and different tiles and such, so I'm, I'm happy with that. And it shows, um, you know, a, kind of the crux of the game, the six factions and things like that. So I think that's cool. I've been looking forward to this one for so long, really so long. I mean, I don't even remember when I, I actually uh, went forward with the Kickstarter, but it's been a while. So happy to see this one finally get here. It was packed really well, too, which is great because it's so heavy. I was worried it was going to get damaged. Whoa. All right, and a Leo Tolstoy quote, man. Okay, so this is <laughs> clearly packed differently than I've seen any other board game. It's just uh, you know loaded into these guys. So we're gonna see what happens here. We'll try to get it all out of the box first. These are nice acrylic um, counters or tokens or what do you wanna say? So we've got all these bags. And they are very nice, high-quality felt bags, which is cool. <clears throat> or I think they're felt. They certainly feel nice and smooth and silky. Not silk, though. Okay, so we've got all of these in here. Holy cow. Bursting with goodness. Let's just get this whole thing out. Okay, so what is this? It comes with <laughs> a Bloodstones like carrying sack or something like that. Interesting. And then the maps themselves, I wasn't expecting this. I must have missed this someplace or forgot because it's been so long. They're cloth. Well, that's interesting. Never really had a cloth map before, um, like this at least. So, yeah. All right, well, here's one of them. Kind of, I mean, it's definitely colorful. It's vibrant. It shows the one to four over here. Interesting. Okay, so there's one. Well, let's do this. It didn't really give it a good. Let's move all this stuff over here. Well, this is definitely the first um, cloth game versus board game I've ever bought. All right. Goodness gracious. I just hope it kind of isn't unruly when I'm trying to play on it, right? But it certainly looks pretty. There's no doubt about it. And it sits thin, so hopefully things just won't move around a lot and it'll be okay. So that's number one, or map number one, I guess. For one to four, that's uh, Tyrant's Lament. Now oh, what do we got? We have map number two, which is Swan Dance, also for one to four players. That didn't work. There's Swan Dance. <clears throat> oh man, we got a lot of maps in here. All right, map number three, maybe. Let's see. Yep, number three. This one is Lady of the Lake. This is for one to three players, so we're tightening it up a little bit more here. Map number four is a big one, one to six. This is Sorcerer's Crucible. So this guy's a nice, wide, large map for six players. Chances are I'll never see a six-player game of anything, really, but at least this is one to six. I mean, they all, guess, I guess, you know, you can have as much tension as you want in this game. Here, I'm going to do it from the other side now since it's easier. That was map number four. <clears throat> And they all look to be very, very high quality. Everything looks good. Um, no real loose threads or anything. <clears throat> Here's number five. And this one is uh, Remains of the Past. That's a one to four map. And finally, map number six here. Uh, number six is a probably one to six player. 
two to six player. Can't use this with one player, I guess. All right, hidden treasures. Okay, well, that's very interesting, like I said. All right, now we have these player aids, which are specific to the different factions here, which is good. That'll keep it nice and easy for you to understand what to do, how things work. So you've got those dragon riders, the horse lords, the hill folk, the necromancers, the chaos horde, and then finally the corsairs. This is just a little, maybe a little warped here, but I can press that out, I hope. Um, all right. Now, I did read the rules. They are very well done. Bravo for making, uh, it was, they're, they are pretty simple, but you did a great job, you as in the designers, Martin and friends, did a great job really thoroughly explaining the situations, you know, and so that really helped me to understand what about this? What about that? What about this? And I love the reminders over here on the sides. I've always liked how that happens in these kind of rule books. Um, so you did a great job with it. And this was really easy to read and digest that I purposely didn't read the strategy tips. I'll wait on those. I, I always like to try to explore on my own. All right, and then you've got the play rate on the back, which is great, thank you. <clears throat> and then the solo campaign book, which is huge. Now I haven't looked at this yet. So this is really looking cool. And I'm very much, I mean, this is the only reason I bought the game because I wouldn't be able to do this, you know, had I not had a good solo. So thank you very much for putting that in there. I would have had to miss out. So it looks like we have a ton of missions in here. Three missions per main faction. Um, which is a lot, and I'm guessing, so that so you've got a mission there with, okay, so there, here's the necromancers. I'm just wondering if you get to play with everything. Um, yeah, you get to even do some Corsair work. So they've got single players for that, and then I'm guessing the Chaos Lords will be at the end. Yeah, Chaos Horde, I mean. Very cool, so you get to do everything you want, and then it looks like there's even more missions here. Um... I don't know, those are maybe like skirmishes. I don't know, 18 missions though, that's a lot. No, no, that's 18 in total, three per guy. Yeah, okay. So plenty of stuff and I think, all right, so it is all mission based. I don't think there's a way to play and I could be wrong, um, like where you just play like a skirmish where you just, you know, play against some rules of AI. Now, I could be wrong about that. Uh, don't quote me. We'll find out later, and I'll tell you about it. Certainly want to do my review. Okay, now let's see these components here. So here we've got all these tiles, and we're not going to open them all up, um, but I'm going to just show you the kind of the quality here. So that looks really nice. It's very well printed. It's clear. It doesn't seem to be damaged. He's got a decent... They're not, they're not super heavy, but, you know, they, they do a... Has some heft to them. All right, so you've got the hill people. Here's some easier to see ones. This is um, the horse lords. And so the whole thing with this game is it's asymmetric faction combat, right? Um, and then you also have these tiles here, which you're drawing out. These are your village tiles. <clears throat> and I think you're putting some tiles in here into your little draw bag for your battles. And that's what this randomizer does. I believe that's what it's for. So just a, a ton of cool looking components here. Oh no, here's the battle bags, I think. Yeah, so here's the, the different ones. I think they're, they're not, they're both the same, attacker and defender. Yep, there we go. Yeah, so there's two of those. And then, you know, you just have just a myriad of high quality components here. They look very nice. It was worth the wait. I know that there were some concerns in the manufacturing process with like image bleed and things like that. And they fixed that, which took a while. So kudos for doing the right thing because, you know, once you got it, you got it forever. So might as well get it right. Yeah, these all look really good. So anyway, I won't open any more, but you get the idea. 
Really good high quality components. Very interesting with the cloth boards. I forgot completely about that. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll definitely see. And notice if you, you know, you do get the game, like these guys don't even have a small bag because they don't get any villages. So they're completely different. The, uh, these are all asymmetric, right? They're all different from one another. So you've got different things going on. Okay. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, everybody. And you know what I say, whatever you do in the future, I really, truly hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Oh, look at that. That's nice. That's nice, brilliant blue. All right. Well, I've only got one more to open. Might as well show you the purple ones. Those are dark purple with... So these are the necromancers, and they have some undead ones in there, too. So nice. Okay. Take it easy, everybody. Thank you very much.